I'd like to welcome you too to this closing event. And on behalf of our principal and vice chancellor, Professor Pamela Gillis, who sends her apologies, I'd also like to welcome you on her behalf. And the reason for that, if I look back over the last three years of this project, is Professor Gillis was the one who had the idea for the concept of a platform to connect and link both social innovation projects and social innovators to each other and into the academy. So she sends her apologies. She wishes very much she could be here, but I'll be taking lots of uh, photographs and sharing them with her when we get back. And it has been quite a journey. Uh, there are a number of people in this room today who have been with us since 2015. Although the program says since 2016, in fact, we ran a pilot for Common Good First partnering with Adelaide Sheik from the University of Johannesburg, a number of social innovators, one of whom, Ahmed Smali Ismail, is in the room today. Jesse Naidu is also here, uh, was planning to be here. And we worked with those individuals to try and understand a little bit about the social innovation landscape in South Africa, to see whether or not the concept that our professor came up with might actually work. And it did. Uh, we worked with Adelaide, we worked with a colleague of hers in Siki Nikisi, who I'm thrilled to say is now at Glasgow Caledonian University doing a social innovation masters, and I had supper with her last week, and she sends her regards to her mother country, and I have a long shopping list of all gold ketchup, uh, the coffee that you like, but I can never remember the name of Jacobs, is it? And some tea or other that she wants. So I've got a shopping bag. <laughs> And she's, and she's looking for us to bring these back to her in Glasgow, where unfortunately the weather is not nearly as nice as it is here. <laughs> so we ran our pilot, and at the end of that we realised, yes, there was something that we could do here. Um, and I then decided, well, I was asked by the principal, to find funding for this project. <laughs> that wasn't so easy. So I started to, I, first of all, I did a I, did, I, I talked to, to uh, Vodafone, I talked to British Telecom, I talked to banks. And in order to do that, I put together a video with Lindy Scott, who is here, who you're going to see a video from very, quick, very, very briefly. And that's what I took on the road. But somebody said to me, well, why didn't you look for European Union money? This was in the good old days when we were still a member. <laughs> January of 2016, on what I call a fishing expedition, Adelaide opened up her address book, and I had three days of flying around South Africa, meeting various people. I came to Port Elizabeth and I met Darrell. I drove up to uh, Grahamstown and Atlanta and I met Di. Uh, Bibi drove into UJ to meet me. I got lost on the how train and arrived very <laughs> hot and sweaty and very late, but Bibi very patiently waited for me. And I met uh, that was it, it was Epo, and Abibi, Darrell, Abby, of course, and, and Di up at Rose. Um, the other two uh, South African universities were added to the mix um, North uh, UFS, and here. <laughs> so we then put together a consortium of 12 universities, uh, 12, 12 universities, 11 universities, and one, in one uh, social innovation uh, networking company called. Social Innovation Exchange 6. I then looked from the very north of Europe to southern Europe. We have found partners in Iceland with the University of uh, Reykjavik University. We found partners in Denmark with Roskilde. We came by way of Norway with the University of Southeast Norway, all the way down to Alicante, and then six who were based in London. So that was our 12. I put, including my fishing expedition, and filling out the ghastly European Union paperwork, which ran to about 112 pages. We did the whole thing in five weeks. We sent it in. And we looked it. And in the meantime, I was still going off and talking to British Telecom and talking to other people trying to get money. And as part of that, we put together a short film, which I'm going to show you now, which became our calling card. And it promotes both the project it will tell you a little bit about it, and you might see some familiar faces on there too. Now, Andre. In the folder. There we go. So this film was put together by um, Lindy Scott and her company Conceptualize, who are based in Johannesburg. And it's two and a half minutes worth of a 
pitch for the program, but some people you will you will recognize some people in this room and you'll hear from them too. Andre, point me in the right direction. It's the wrong the wrong one. Okay, that's <laughs> not bad. That's true. You see how digital skills are so critical to <laughs> 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 Social innovation, 
landscape. And Karen is going to talk a little bit more about that this morning. So we did reports back in 2016, as well as ones we just finished, and they will be published on our website in due course. Um, Vivi and Dan from uh, Rhodes and Northwest put together the criteria for how we might select our partners, and that's project selection. The chunky meat in the sandwich, however, are these two. Our platform and our digital storytelling. And you're going to hear more about those uh, today and tomorrow. The platform is going to be launched with some fanfare this afternoon. And the digital storytelling work, which is particularly dear to some of our hearts in this room, we have taken a, a concept, which we'll hear about later, which started out in California, and we've adapted it and rebuilt it and recreated it with an African audience in mind, very much leaning on the spirit of Ubuntu. So that has been uh, an absolute joy as part of this project and is something which you're going to hear about, which is now spreading out across our six South African partners and also very much so back in Europe as well. And then the last three on the left there, well that's all the kind of admin stuff and the stuff that we have to do for the European Union. Communication, we have a very vibrant um, social media uh, output on both uh, on Twitter, which we'll be seeing more about today when I take my seat on the live tweeting. Instagram and Facebook. And face, in fact, some elements of today's events will be live streamed on Facebook. In fact, right now, wow, hello, Mum. Live streamed on Facebook this morning, and then uh, back on launch as well today. So that's been, and then quality and governance. Uh, our friend Christina from the University of Alicante, who has had to stay home for family problems, she has the good fortune of looking after the governance side of things. Ahmed, who is here, uh, is a member of our advisory and evaluation group, and uh, Christina calls them together to look at all the things we've done and input from a, a, a neutral position. You know. And then, top left, uh, Johan, project manager extraordinary, uh, is keeping us all honest and on track in terms of all the things we've had to do over the last few years. So that's what we've been doing. In amongst that, we have met as a consortium six times in Alicante, in Port Elizabeth, in Glasgow, Johannesburg, uh, Rainstein, Macanda, and here in Cape Town for our final event. And alongside that, we also had subgroups where we met here to determine who would build our platform. We've had meetings in Brussels, <coughs> Adelaide and Deidre went to the Côte d'Ivoire for a European Union event, and uh, Reykjavik. Um, and we were back here in Cape Town in December, which was fantastic. And in that time, we've met and we've worked through the project. We've also had great fun. We've, we've, um, we've seen elephants, we've been in castles in our county, we've seen lochs and castles in Scotland, and I think it actually stayed dry, which was a miracle. Um, so we, we've grown together, I think, as a family in that time, and it's going to be very sad that we leave today. But I think, um, and tomorrow, but I'm hoping that there will be many ways in which we'll carry on working and keep in touch over the years to come. I should say that our friends at the European Union are very happy with what we've done so far. We had to submit a midway report last April, and we got a 75 to 100 mark, which is the highest mark. Um, and that was uh, based on the review of our project relevance, uh, the quality of the implementation of the project, the project team and its cooperation, its impact and dissemination. So we got a very high mark. And when this all finishes and I come back from visiting the wine, the wine lands of Franschhoek and the elephants of Addo again, we start the whole process again in terms of doing our final report. So um, my partners in Cumberland First, enjoy the next few days and weeks while you can because I'm going to be chasing you through the first. So what are the next steps? Well, friends, that's where you come in. Uh, we hope that over the next few days, as you hear more about what we've done in Common Good First, you will join, along with the partners, you will become part of this family too, and join us on the next steps of our journey as, as mentors, as sponsors, even as funders, to help us take the next steps in our journey, and we'll join you to the Common Good First family for the next chapter of our story. Thank you very much.